topic today is very important it's um, evidence shows that we are very close to the end time we should be well prepared for the end time uh, I'm using um, evidence from global warming I'm using global uh, warming evidence to show that to show that this world will not last for a long time just from the perspective of global warming and then uh, we see that the fulfillment of related prophecies uh, in the Bible and I'm going to explain that uh, shortly okay so um, I'm showing the evidence to show that um, uh, the global warming condition is getting very serious and according to uh, the um, prediction of the scientists this world is going to get very uh, condition is going to get very uh, worse and then it could be the fulfillment of biblical prophecies okay global warming will be so serious that there will be serious damages to the world in 10 to 30 years that uh, this is supported by the scientists uh, I'm just using this to uh, to show that um, that you know the biblical prophecies related to there are some prophecies related to global warming is going to be fulfilled and I'm going to explain that first I want to explain this organization IPCC it is uh, the intergovernmental intergovernmental panel on climate change it has gathered much information on climate change by specialists of different nations and is well uh, accepted this IPCC conclusion okay now um, there is a, a pre-industrial uh, period of time what does that mean is before the industrial revolution the temperature at that time compared to now the average temperature now it's about a uh, one degree centigrade higher or 1.2 degree centigrade higher now people might say well this is not very high but actually uh, it's an average temperature it is it is very high and uh, if it's if it's 1.5 degree uh, warmer than the pre-industrial period then there will be um, okay 8% of the plants will die and then if it's 2 degree will be 16% and then of the insects um, that if it's 1.5 degree higher than the pre industrial period then there will be six percent of the insects will die because we rely on insects like butterflies and bees uh, to pollinate the plants and to keep the balance of the of the living things and then if it's two degree then it will be 18 percent of the insects will die so, so this is three times worse than 1.5 degrees centigrade and then the coral at this point uh, 70 to 90 percent of the coral have already died and this is I'm, I mean at 1.5 degree at 2 degree above the pre-industrial period it will be 99 percent that means almost all the coral would have died and when the coral has died then a lot of fish will also die and then the temperature um, will be um, let me see <coughs> now this is very <coughs> sorry this picture is very uh, <coughs> not very clear but uh, so the temperature will be much higher when it's two degree centigrade higher the sea ice melting all the North Pole sea ice melting uh, if it's 1.5 degree will be once every 100 years but at 2 degree will be once every 10 years okay so 
there will be a lot of changes if uh, the temperature is 1.5 degree uh, higher than the pre-industrial period and if it is 2 degree higher then it will be a uh, very bad situation and there will be a lot of uh, very serious consequences. Now how close are we to 1.5 degrees centigrade? Now first I want to explain again uh, that 1.5 degrees centigrade it seems not a lot but actually it's the average temperature that means in many places the temperature will be much higher than 1.5 degree it could be 10 degree higher in in some places now according to the prediction the calculation of IPCC that is the intergovernmental uh, panel of climate change they say that uh, in 2040 in 2040 already it will reach 1.5 degree so that that is um, 19 years from now and then in 2065 if we don't change if uh, the you know the use of cars and industrial industries and all these ways of producing the greenhouse gases if they don't change if how we use gasoline doesn't change what happened is then uh, in 2065 will be tw uh, two degree above the um, pre-industrial period of time okay and then another organization called berkeleyearth.org they also do study and in this study it shows that in 2020 in uh, 2040 already that means uh, 2040 is 19 years from now it will be 1.5 degree um, higher than the pre industrial period and in um, 2060 we will be two degree higher than the pre industrial period so compared to this is a similar similar result and then this is NASA NASA is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration of the United States now it has a few lines the red line is when uh, there is a higher growth of the um, emission of greenhouse gases and then the green will be moderate growth and then the blue will be uh, low growth and then this uh, orange will be constant carbon dioxide that that means um, that we stop using gasoline altogether we stop using coal altogether to burn coal or to use gasoline or cars altogether then it will be this orange line and but at this point it people are not stopping the countries are not stopping and uh, many countries don't tell people that they should stop you know slow down the use of gasoline and coal and and different or even buying equipment because equipment is produced by uh, energy and then the energy comes from burning uh, from gasoline or from coal so what happened is this line here that we see that the prediction is that in 2050 will be 1.5 degree higher than the period industrial uh, period and then in 2065 will be two degree higher and in 2088 will be three degree higher than the pre-industrial period and it will be it will be very very serious two degree and three degrees is very very serious that um, that many people would have died and many countries would have very very serious problem okay now countries are not slowing down the global warming the industries are producing a lot of uh, greenhouse gases the vehicles are producing a lot of greenhouse gases deforestation especially in uh, Amazon the Amazon forest in uh, <coughs> South America 
<coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so there's, you know, the forests are very important to us. The forests will keep the carbon dioxide no, low. But at this point now, a lot of the rainforest in Amazon and in different places are burned up in order to produce agricultural area for planting crops. But this is much different from the forest, which firstly uh, take, you know, absorb a lot of carbon dioxide. And secondly, it also uh, has a variety of living things in a rainforest. And this is very important for keeping uh, the earth uh, cooler. And then the hill fire, because of the heat, there are a lot of hill fires in many places and this will cause, uh, this will bring in a lot of carbon dioxide and also methane gas. And there are many other uh, causes uh, that bring in the global warming, uh, the greenhouse gases. So the countries and the people are not slowing down in the use of uh, gasoline, coal or other things or buying things. So what happened is uh, we, will, we are, you know, continue in a direction of producing more greenhouse gases and the temperature will continue to go higher and higher. And what will serious global warming bring? Now this will relate to what the Bible prophesied. What it will bring is frequent heat waves and many people die because of heat. So a lot of heat waves and water problems. It will be so hot that there will be a lot of droughts and, uh, and, uh, and the earth, uh, the ground will be dried up. And also in some places there will be a lot of floods. So in some places it will be very dry and in some places it will be, there will be many floods. If you have watched the news uh, this year, you notice that there are droughts in many places and floods in many places and heat waves. All these are becoming much more serious than before. And the death of crops when it's so hot, even the crops cannot survive because of the heat and shortage of water. So there will be famine. Now all these are prophesied by the, in the Bible. And serious pandemic infectious disease, diseases that there will be more and more diseases because the mosquito will be more active. The virus uh, and the bacteria will be more active. They grow very fast. And then uh, it was uh, actually there, are, there is much danger. Now in these two years, we have seen the destructiveness of COVID-19 that we don't know when it will go away and more will come. It's, you know, it's what the Bible prophesied. And this is what will happen when uh, uh, the earth become hotter and hotter. And also the melting of the polar ice in the North Pole and the South Pole, then the sea level would rise. And destruction of coastal agricultural regions and also coastal cities. Many coastal cities will be submerged underwater and there will be more floods and more tsunami and also frequent hill fires because it's so hot it's easy for the trees to get uh, burned get fire and climate migration cause more wars because in some places it will be so hot and so dry no food then the people would just move to other places and then the people in other places want to stop them migrating to them. And then what happened is there will be wars. They will be fighting. People will be, countries will be fighting for places where they can survive, where they can have food and water. And then the people will become, have panic. They will have a lot of fear. And the political situation will be unstable because then you know, the government will be unstable and the people will be unstable. They are, they are in great fear and they will fight and they will uh, loot the places. That means steal things. 
they will steal things from the shops so in many places there will be very serious robbing uh, and uh, destruction of the law of the land and also the water dries up in the land causes more earthquakes so the land will be very dry because there's a lot of water in the ground now but then when it's hotter and hotter this water will evaporate and then the land become very dry so when it become very hot what happened is there will be much more heat waves people more people die from that and drought and floods in some places and the crops will die so there will be famine and then serious pandemic infectious diseases that uh, there will be many more diseases than now and then the rise of the sea level that many uh, because most of the land people live in are close to the coast and more, uh, much of this land will be submerged underwater or there will be tsunami or floods that destroy this uh, land and there will be uh, more hill fi fire and climatic migration a lot of people migrate to other places and panic of people people will be in panic and they will rob places they will steal and the law will become uh, the, uh, the government cannot inf uh, infor enforce the, the law people will steal and rob and kill people so the political situation will be very unstable and then the water dries up the land causes more and more earthquake okay and then biblical prophecies fulfilled by global warming so these prophecies will be fulfilled first revelation 16 9 and men were scorched with great heat so the bible does prophesy that one day there will be great heat so when uh, the prophecy when the global warming becomes so serious it will be the fulfillment of this prophecy and then matthew 24 7 for nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places so the bible prophesied jesus prophesied that there will be wars between nations and there will be famines and pestilence pe pestilences that means uh, plagues diseases and earthquakes so the bible prophesied this and then global warming can bring this uh, to happen and then Luke 21 11 and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences so here it add the pestilences the infectious disease and then on the earth nations will be anguish in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea and this uh, is fulfilled in a tsunami which become much more common now than in the past so the Bible prophesied that there will be more and more heat wars, there will be wars, uh, rumors of wars. That means that, you know, that people will hear news about wars and also there will be a lot of terrorism, uh, which is, you know, uh, in over the world. There are terrorist, uh, terroristic activities every month in many places. It happens all the time and uh, also uh, different kinds of uh, pandemic diseases will happen and the earthquakes and the famines and, uh, and also the tsunami so this biblical prophecy will be fulfilled when the earth gets hotter and hotter and God promised to be with us and guide us in the midst of tribulation so in the midst of tribulation we don't have to be afraid when we trust in God so this great tribulation at the end time will uh, what happen is there will be Christians who trust in God and then they really they pray for the guidance of God and God will provide for them but there will be Christians who give up and then they will worship the beast and receive the seal of the beast and then they will lose their salvation and uh, but Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit with, will be with us. God will be with us to, to guide us and to protect us. So we don't need to be afraid. So we, at that time, 
when Christians continue to be Christians, they need to trust in God totally. Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that hour what you might uh, ought to say. So at that time, the Holy Spirit will teach us what to say. If the Holy Spirit guides us, that means the Holy Spirit will also uh, tell us how to get how to uh, have safety and have food because because uh, in the last days uh, the beast will be very active and people have to worship the beast and receive the seal of the beast in order to be able to buy and sell. That means they cannot buy food un unless they have the seal of the beast. So at that time that the people will, um, uh, you know, many people will receive, actually all the people receive the, the seal of the beast. And then for Christians, if we want to continue to live, we need to trust in God totally. And because God is in control of everything. Because God is in control of everything. God is in control of everything. So, um, so He will be able to provide for us. He will protect us. So as Christians, we don't need to be afraid. We'll say, God will protect me. I just trust in God totally. Everything is in God's hand. The whole world is in God's hand. So I trust in God totally. So I hope we all learn to trust in God totally now, because even now, everything we have comes from God. Everything we have comes from God. Uh, our food, our future, our blessings all come from God. So I hope that everyone believes that, uh, that we all rely on God only. Now, man, there are many Christians who are not faithful to God. They think that they can take advantage of God and just get the blessings and then they don't follow God and they don't obey God. What happened is God is unhappy with them and God will not bless them. Even now, everything is in God's hand. God knows who loves Him. God knows who obeys Him. God knows who tell people about Jesus. God knows everything. So as Christians, we, we want to trust in God totally. Trust in God totally and put our life in the hands of God even now. And in the future, we have no choice but to trust in God totally, altogether. Okay, the sequence of events when Jesus returns. So here now, we're going to go through these verses to see what will happen in the last days. Because this is very, very important that in the last days we should um, follow the the Bible and understand the Bible and know what will happen so we can be prepared for the end time. Okay, now I put it in down here what will happen one, uh, in green uh, numbers. Okay, Matthew 24 verse 4. Jesus answered, watch out, okay, excuse me for a moment. Okay, let's read this, Matthew 24, 4. Jesus answered when the disciples asked him about the end times. When will you return? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. So Jesus answered first thing, 
that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah and will deceive many. So the first thing Jesus said, there will be many who deceive people and claim that they are the Messiah. Now there are many uh, false religions now. There are different movements uh, that the leaders will claim to be God or the Messiah or sent by God. And uh, so this, all of these are the fulfillment of this prophecy. And then you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. So there will be wars and now we have more and more wars and actually in uh, today many wars are in the form of um, terrorist attacks or attacks of the internet uh, there has been times that some countries suffer because some other country will destroy the or stop the internet service and then because uh, in many countries the water supply the electricity uh, everything that people depend on uh, is controlled by uh, computers that the computer will control this when the internet is stopped then <clears throat> all these services have to stop and also then the country will be vulnerable to attack and also there are different other kinds of uh, uh, wars by uh, by rumors many a number of countries they will spread false rumors that are not true these are not true things and then they deceive many people so and uh, countries are trying to fight against each other all the time and then <clears throat> nations will rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom there will be famines so uh, there will be lack of food and earthquakes in various places all these are the beginning of birth pain so it's just the beginning so first change is that there will be many false prophets that people claim to be Messiah the Messiah and the second is there will be wars and famines earthquakes um, and also in uh, Luke 21 it says that there will be pestilences there will be pandemic of different kinds of diseases okay and then the third change then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me at that time many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the in increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold but so here what it says is that the next thing after the initial birth pains that means the earthquakes the famines the drought uh, pestilences the wars after this become uh, when this become more serious the next thing that will happen will be persecution of Christians that you'll be handed over to the to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of Jesus that all nations will hate us because they don't like Christianity because they are driven by the devil the devil hates Christianity now the devil doesn't fight against Buddhism or other religions but the devil fight against Christianity Christianity because the devil knows that Christianity is from the true God so they will hate us all nations will hate us and this is happening more and more that many Christians are persecuted uh, I'll show you um, uh, okay here is a, a, a map that shows that there are 50 nations uh, that is uh, most dangerous to follow Jesus okay this the red one are the most serious one and then the orange one orange one are the secondary uh, ne less dangerous and the yellow is uh, the, is still dangerous so yellow is the first level of danger uh, the orange is the second level or brick color this is brick color and then the red will be the the th most dangerous place 
and some of these places are getting more and more serious that there will be more danger to be Christians. So this is happening in many places because of their religious and political persecution. There are persecution from other religions and political persecution. Uh, if you notice that in many countries that it becomes harder and harder to uh, to preach the gospel. When I went to um, the mission field, I've heard that in a country, now that could happen in more than one country, the churches have to have a paved parking lot. But actually the road in that country, most of it is dirt road. It's not paved. But they demand that the churches have to have paved parking lot and a paved driveway to the parking lot. And if they don't have that, the church will be locked up. I myself went there and saw the sign from the government that the church will be locked up because it doesn't have a paved parking lot and paved uh, driveway. And also the second requirement is that uh, the church door has to be closed during meetings. Now in this place it's very hot and it's very hot, very hard uh, to have uh, air conditioning. It will be very expensive. They don't have money for air conditioning. And then they have to close the doors. That means it's very, it will be very hot inside without air conditioning. So when they cannot follow the rule, then when they have not, don't have the paved parking lot and they don't have air conditioning, then the church will be closed. I saw the lock from the government and the letter of the government on the church door. And I heard that in places that uh, there will be more strict regulations about who can go and, and preach and train people in the country. So this is becoming more and more difficult. So this is something that is getting worse and worse. And so the time will come soon. When we see that, just now we saw that from global warming, the time is short. Of course, we cannot say, you know, this is 100% uh, definite, but this is most likely this will happen that uh, in 2065, it will be two degrees above uh, the prehistorical time. That means all, almost all the coral will die and the ocean will, many fish will die there. And this whole world will have a lot of drought and famine and earthquake and uh, floods and hill fire and all these kind of things. So within 10 to 30, 40 years, this world will be very, very different. I hope uh, you see that this is not, you know, uh, some empty uh, prediction, but this is prediction from scientists that shows proof of this prediction or, or it, sh it should be called forecast. It's the forecast of what will happen to the world in the next 10 to 40 years, what will happen to the world. And it will be the fulfillment of the biblical prophecies 